Just take one hit. Don't you want to be cool? <laughs> Gather round everyone. Do? The show's about to begin. Turn on, tune in, drop out, this show's amazing It's Super Lemon Haze, you know them boys always blazing Put one in the air, fill your glass and get to raisin Kirkman praising, stool flag waving Chopping up the topics is the choking us chronic Scott and Eric breaking it down like 21st century profits Eyes glazed and minds days it's knowledge they convey Roll up and consume the Super Lemon Haze Super 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 Lemon Haze Haze. Going to ask you several questions. Super lemon haze. How do you feel? I feel like a like a slice of butter melting on top of a big old pile of flapjacks. Yeah. Welcome everyone to another uh, episode of Super Lemon Haze. How are we sounding? Super Lemon Haze. Super Sounding good. Motherfucker. Feeling good. Uh, Cheers. So this is um this is to your your son. This is mm. first first year birthday. Happy right? birthday, little guy. Little guy. Yep. Thank you, sir. Cheers. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I got the fancier yep. shit Man- today. Managed to keep him alive for a whole year. Excited about it. That's a big deal, you know, because the first year is typically when all that shit happens, right? right? I've got a good team. I'm very, very <laughs> thankful. It's not on me only. So if it was only on me, there was no, there's no chance. Where do you stand? So, so in terms of like a team, so she, would you consider her like the, she's like the Bill Belichick and you're the Tom Brady or? Oh, the, God, no. No, of... the nanny is the Tom Brady. Oh, I got The you. nanny is the so, executor. The nanny's so out the there Bill throwing Belichick. touchdowns. The, is yeah, the nanny throws the touchdowns. And she architects the plan. I mean, the pulled hammy. I mean, maybe I'm like a Vinatieri. I come in and kick a field goal and, and and save the day and have a good you know get somebody to giggle and play a game or something out of that crowd but yeah no i'm i'm nowhere near the architect gotcha or the, or so the, so we're we're, we're going full kind of, steam man like you know unlike unlike that that fuckhead manners uh you know we fucking produce we know we know our shit we're experts in our field and we have so much content that we're producing like one and a half to two episodes a week a little bit ahead of things at this point yeah uh yeah i'm jumping motherfucking fast it seems like there's been a lot of mincel activity <laughs> There's uh you seemed you were you were hosting polls and, and shouting at people we're we're fighting manners there's all kinds of things going on I wanted to get some updates well I mean the thing is is that and I don't want to spend any more time that I have to about that guy but his his shtick is like you know canceling people like that's he's a, he's a he he holds a trophy on, on his mantle and he says that's his, his cunt trophy basically he's the cunt he he prides himself on being like the number one cunt in the minifan mm-hmm. world because. He was doing. He he has like two shows. He's got one with this other Australian friend, this guy Jamie, who actually I think is much more talented than he is. I find him to be. I don't know. He's he's like I said on on one of my tweets. He's just you know better first. I voted for Jamie. You voted for Jamie. I voted for Jamie. Just, just for you, man. Because um, I know that fuck matters. But. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I'm gonna release that poll, but you know I think we had about 30 people vote. And it was overwhelmingly uh, in favor of Jamie. The poll was well endorsed. I yeah, saw that. I mean, and, and actually, you and unfortunately with the with the polls, it's kind of uh, um, it's anonymous. You can't tell who's voting who. Otherwise, I would be able. I'd to, be happy to share my vote with yeah, the crowd. Well, you know, but but the point is that like I think sixty five percent of the people who voted. So think about that, man. So that's a lot of fucking right. people. And I, I I don't give a shit. I'm not a part of this fucking cancel culture like like he is. I find that just to be a pretty weak and insecure stance. Like just oh, I'm gonna fucking I'm gonna talk shit about all these other people who 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 I think are boring and I'm gonna get them canceled. And then like after a while, I'm like, you know what? This guy, he he doesn't really have any cards in his deck. He's got one. He's got a single thing, and and it's just like his hate. You know, at first I and and I think everyone in the community was like, oh, you know, this is getting old. And and I was just waiting. I was waiting patiently to see if that really was the only fucking card he has in his deck. And it really is. He's got nothing else going for him. He's not he's not able to to adapt to anything that's thrown in his direction because there's he's taping both of these shows on the same night and he drops the same fucking content. You would pick a couple of shows to axe. The bad ones, you'd say, I, I, I don't really get the whole point of the um the conspiracy theories, like yep. the QAnon one. Like I think they can get the show in a lot of trouble. I think Kirk knows that too. I don't really understand Super Lemon Haze. Not really sure what that's all about. Um, Either is Eric the fuckhead. Yeah. There are some shows on the channel that, you know, I don't watch, have never watched. I mean, that. So if you were to say pick two shows to axe, what would they be? Probably the conspiracy show. Okay. I just don't understand that. I mean, it can get him in a lot of trouble if Steve doesn't edit it, edit it right and he already has missed something on the first show. And 
I don't know. I don't really get the Super Lemon Haze podcast. I know you don't like it either. I just... From one, he taped it. And then the next, an hour or two later, he's doing another show and he talks about the same shit. And I'm like, I'm like, and I swear to God, and I'm, I'm, I'm watching does it. He put, does he change his outfit? He changed his outfit. He and Jamie, because Jamie was a guest on the other show. Excuse me. They both changed their t-shirts. But this motherfucker went from one Red Sox jersey to another Red Sox jersey, which is also like, Think, I'm thinking this dude is just trying way too fucking hard to just like appeal to the majority of the crowd who is Boston people. Boston and, folks. Yeah. I mean, I, I know that it's an international community. I, that's just, I want to make sure I get this right first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, sorry, this is a basic, probably a basic bitch question here. Yeah. But so he has one crappy show that he puts on. No, he's and, got, yeah. And then hold on, just walk, let me walk through yeah, this yeah. for a second. He has some dumb shirt on with some dumb background. He has like the cow zoom, cow zoom background or something with the cows in the pasture background or something cool. That's a good and bit. then he goes back two hours later and he puts another dumb shirt on different outfit. Yeah. And then he puts on like the teacup party background on the zoom party. Yeah. He exactly. changes his background up and then talks about the same shit the whole time. Same shit. So, so talent is sucky programs from yeah. matters. And, and it's funny because yeah. you know, and this, this also came up on the, um, on the Mike and the Minifan show, you know, again, Mike brought us up. Again, oh, really? out of complete nowhere. And again, I stopped calling these mm. shows. Exactly. Mm. But it's all so so Menners and Jamie on their show, Mike and the Men fans, they brought up the same fucking shit, which is which is this is this is the this is this has been the constant theme. The problem with this show now in general is there's this, there's the Lady Men fans, there's uh yeah. fucking nickels worth of free advice, there's the Men Cell Intel, there's the intern show, and there's the OG Men fan show, and there's the Australian Men fan show. And, and there's the some premise, more that works. The premise of all of those shows are what happened the last week in the Kirk Minahan show world? A lot of so, overlap. Like, you... I know at one point, wasn't the idea for the YouTube kind of to also involve some shows that weren't necessarily about yeah. the Kirk Minahan and that's show. What... All of the shows on the YouTube channel, minus one or two of them, are reviews of the past week of Kirk Minahan content. So everyone's just doing reviews after reviews after reviews. And it's this fucking ongoing joke that like, oh, this guy's new, this guy. And so, and, and they're all, they're all like, on the same page about that and then all of a sudden and they're like but if we say let's not do a show about the show then we get things like and they always name super lemon haze the problem you get into there is then you get super lemon haze which i have no no fucking idea why he's on youtube i think kirk just thought it would be funny because mm -hmm. there was an argument about it but there's no other than the fact that that guy's a fan of the show it doesn't make it Menner's, Menner's his biggest criticism uh, about our show, and, and he includes us into the, the sort of pot with others, is that if, God forbid, someone from outside the, 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 the Miniverse shows up on our YouTube channel and sees Super Lemon Haze, they're going to be completely turned off and they're not going to know what this world's about. But then Good I'm like, God. Good yeah, but God. Then I'm like, heaven forbid. Yeah, exactly. But then I'm like, that's exact, like for smart, intelligent, devoted people like us, who I also believe is the majority of the audience who's who's listening to Kirk because Kirk's a sophisticated dude uh, and he's super smart, super intelligent. I think you have to be at, at a certain level to kind of catch on and listen to his, you know, his shtick. Like he's, he's got a sort of smart level of com comedy or humor. So I feel like, I feel like people just jumping on the YouTube completely random and seeing us, that would, sh that shit would fly. Kirk's stance has always been who gives a fuck. If one people, if one person likes it, if five people like it, you know, if fucking a thousand people like it, who gives a fuck? Like so the bottom line is that like that motherfucker continues to sort of run <laughs> his mouth. He's a cunt. He thinks he's <laughs> he's got any like creativeness to him. I mean, I guess, you know, the, and the funny thing is that, like, oh, have the mighty have fallen because this <clears throat> motherfucker about a month ago was like the height of the Minifan community. Like he was like he was like at the top. And I swear every week the guy motherfucker like opens his mouth and does a show. He just tumbles and tumbles. You know, the things I've said about the Minna Lady show, like, <laughs> you know, can you show us more of your rack? Can you be put makeup on? I mean, you ha must have a, a really bad impression of Aussie men. Very similar. Have you thought, like, has the cast talked about, you know, your appearance on the Minna Lady show? As a, have you sort of taken any of my notes on board? <laughs> well, I, I have to say, I, um, I don't usually wear makeup on a regular basis to begin with. Um, so some, some, a lot of something time. you could look at doing. Um, ha have any of the other cast members like reached out to you for guidance on working on their appearance for that show? Or 
double. So that motherfucker should have just like stopped while he was ahead because the more shit that that guy puts out there, the dumber he fucking looks, the, the dumber he fucking sounds. And and the less his stock just fucking drops. Like like Menners is fucking intercom right now. He's a fucking in my mind. <laughs> he's plummeting. Yeah, he's fucking plummeting. He's like a like Menners in a, in another like two or three weeks. If he keeps doing the same shit, if he, if he if he can't fucking pivot and do something completely original or new, that's that guy's gonna be a fucking penny stock. Eddie, you, know, you and yeah, I we're are we're, we're doing our fucking thing because we're passionate, we're smart, and we're doing it right. Slowly, we're building an audience. You know, every week, we get. And more DM, constantly getting comments, very positive comments, um, great feedback. feedback. And I just feel like, um, you know, we're just getting getting better and better every single week. So our fucking, we're, we're doing, you know, we're going to ride out this fucking coronavirus web, you know, this wave, and we're going to fucking take it and we're going to fucking build. And we're going to, when, when this sh fucking shit's said and done, when everyone's back to work, back to business, man, we're going to be fucking killing it. Like when we're on episode like 20, because I know this is going to go on for another fucking like month or two, but I guarantee you we're going to be in a fucking rhythm. We're going to have fucking phenomenal guests. We're going to have phenomenal conversations like we have and always have and always will. And and everyone is just going to be fucking saying, wow, I wish we could do that. I wish we could be like that because that's my goal. My goal is to fucking just do it, produce, be original, uh, never fucking jump on these same fucking topics that everyone's doing over and over again. I want to entertain the KMS community, but I also want to, you know, stay in touch with the cannabis community, which we, you know, we're going to get into today. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but like, that's our goal, man. I just want to fucking like ride this thing and that's it. No, it's that's good. I mean, I feel confident in just hearing you saying that and, 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 uh, reciprocate a hundred percent just because of how many things we have lined up. I mean, we have so many different show ideas and show, so many different things, already in the works and already all set up for for the future i mean we're again we're already a couple of shows ahead just on the schedule as is and um i mean i think both just the just the notes section alone that we have with proposed guests ideas topics uh, i mean we're i'd say we're another five six shows already just Deep. ready to go yeah and the amazing thing is that like you know we're not even talking about some of the you know outside visits that we wanted to you know we wanted to go to different farms we wanted to go to you know just 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 we wanted to bring the equipment we haven't done any field trips no except field your trips. quick little trip down the street because this goddamn coronavirus nonsense but all right so you know i was interested in in talking today a little bit uh, more about a lot of the current events that are going on in the cannabis community you've been busy on twitter i know well it's just, it's it's a really interesting time and you're and, you're, you're damning with Shaleen and, and retweeting yeah. <laughs> some interesting folks and getting all in there i like it shout out to Shaleen. <laughs> yeah uh we would love to have you on anytime anytime any, sure. anytime i'm gonna always send you the link I actually DM'd you today. I'm going to send you the link. At any point you want to just jump, you want to jump in on our conversation, just jump in. I'll add it's you easy. to the... We'll, to do the... Right, we'll get you right up. <laughs> but the bottom line is that, you know, we're obviously talking specifically about Massachusetts because we're not sure. I mean, we could, we could speak specifically on some of the federal stuff that's going on that maybe that's impacting us. But, you know, state by state, everyone's dealing with their own sort of medical marijuana community or cannabis community differently. And, um, you know, I would say the biggest drama... I don't say drama, but I would say the biggest problem that's happening right now in the state of Massachusetts is the governor shutting down all of the businesses, but only leaving open the essential businesses. And I think I brought up in one of the other earlier uh, early podcasts that you know in that in that group of essential places that can stay open businesses uh, is like all the package stores, so your liquor, your wine, your beer. But what they have closed and what the what the governor and his team has decided is is not essential are the recreational um, cannabis stores. I always say rec dispensaries, dispensaries, recreational dispensaries. I have to just, I'm going to keep you got, it. You got it. You're old school. I'm old school. And, and so some of the, some of the headlines that were coming out uh, to this week were all about that. So I would say the first one that was, was, was very um, exciting was that there's a group of, of growers and I think some consumers who are suing the state yeah. and the governor. And I think that's what spurred most of the headlines and what's come on this week yeah. with the some of the newer news and articles that are being posted, or editorials and articles yeah. that are getting posted. I would say of the of the mainstream stuff. There's also some there's some sort of back end stuff that's happening within the cannabis community, and that was sort of also what I started to do this week was I just started to get really heavily into and involved in the content that the Massachusetts um, Cannabis Control Commission has been you know, putting out there. 
Um, and if, for those who don't know, who don't live in Massachusetts, or, or for those in Massachusetts who don't know much of it, that there's, there's basically that group of uh, staff members, and maybe I think it's four or five there's a, commissioners. There's a handful of them, yep. Yeah, who, who run this uh, um, Cannabis Control Commission, and they're pretty much the people that are creating the policy for for you know legalizing and 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 you know keeping uh the cannabis community in business here and also people like us who are medical card owners consumers in general going to these stores and, and being able to do it in a, in a legal way so yep. so that commission is like the commission that's really setting the the tone and the policy and and you know i connected with one of them online which is you know typical eric fashion you know i i I do my thing and I get involved and I go all in and I'm really just trying to get, you know, I'm, and I'm super, I'm, again, I'm super excited about this whole process, having, having just received my medical card and sort of now really getting into my second month of, of using cannabis as a part of my, um, you know, treatment for some of my stuff. And now you've stepped in shit right into some of the uh, hot button topics. Yeah. And now the, and, medical and, marijuana and yes. recreational marijuana in Massachusetts. Totally. So, so yeah, again, so just kind of re bring, bringing to light some of the highlights. So the first one was that there's a lawsuit going on and the lawsuit is primarily working on trying to open up these recreational dispensaries. Yeah. Um, the other thing was the governor was shutting down all businesses unless they were deemed essential. So because the medical marijuana community was still opened and considered essential, they were running really low on inventory and stock. So yes. to sort of fill the inventory or that gap because people were still coming to the stores and trying to buy the products, but as the inventory sort of go down, they, they, they so the Cannabis Control Commission um, went to the governor and through this whole like cease and desist, I'm not a lawyer, so I don't want to get into the legalese of it. The commission was like, Hey, no, you need to, you need to fucking like let these guys do their thing because we're running low. But there's a huge population of people who carry medical card because they actually use it as a part of their medicinal treatments. Yeah. And, and having so, the medical card will give you <clears throat> some access, excuse me, to some um, stronger products and more product. You can carry more, have more, buy more as a medical user. Um, so, and but, you usually get the, you can usually find some higher strain, higher, stronger strains yeah. or more, um, you know, a lot of times the, um, the store, the dispensaries will hold some of their more interesting strains for, or CBD strains for medical only type stuff. But, but other than that, yeah, you're right. Yeah, There's but like not that's, a big that's, difference. The point is though, just imagine if like, you know, CVS, so everyone's getting like heart medications, blood pressure medications, cholesterol medications, diabetes medications. Imagine if like all of a sudden that supply started to like dwindle and people would go to CVS and be like, dude, where's my medicine? Where's my medication? Yeah. And they're like, sorry, man, uh, the government shut down X pharmaceutical companies. So we're no longer getting that. Yeah, it was. A, so that's, and it that's, was a big win. It was it was. A, or, I mean, I guess it was a step towards some wins and yeah. an, an easement, so to speak. But I still think that probably sucks for a lot of those rec dealers because they're probably now having to sell it wholesale. Sale, yeah. which wholesale in this state now is like such a right. lower number. Well, uh, you know, they although, were selling at a more retail price until that that gets ended. Yeah, but, but actually, I mean, I, I I don't know, but I wonder if it's the opposite. You know, I, I mean, the whole thing about like the whole oil and gas prices, the reason why those things are fucking plummeting because no one's using their cars, no one's buying oil, no one's buying gas. But if, if you're if you're talking about now like a person who's who is a professional grower and has a has a has a has some inventory or supply? I'm, I mean, even though they might be selling it at a discounted rate, they they might be selling a lot more of it. Yeah, I mean, either way, it's a it's yeah. a it's a win. It's a win. Um, a couple of other things to stats and numbers and things and and ideas to think about. Medical cards like tripled oh. in in uh, an issue issuance yeah. in the month of March or something yeah. like that. So I tweeted that out too. Um, you know, again, also a part of this sort of cease and, cease and desist in this lawsuit and stuff everyone has been reporting some of the the facts and details and it's it's like 150 plus percent up, more yeah way up. and i mean obviously making it um it was it's never been tele like telehealth style right. and that was the other huge, skype style right. like you did so exactly and and that was the other huge change is that you no longer had to visit a physician to get this medical card they're they're certifying professionals to be able to do this via telemedicine yeah. so yeah so that was like that was like the hot the hot stuff that was happening in the cannabis community so the you... other thing i just thought was interesting was so baker you know his answer or his justification to it all was that he didn't want other people coming from out of state so well, you, and you saw you know i tweeted i tweeted at you mm -hmm. um i'm at the the cannabis doc one uh, on twitter now you can you can follow me on there uh, but i tweet I, you know i tweeted on you that seems like or responded to you i think it seems like that's kind of uh 
a pretty simple fix. I mean, why do we need to ban because we're worried about out of staters yeah. or potentially, you know, big lines and social distancing? I mean, yeah. I, all the medical places have yeah, I, I, I moved don't, to social distancing yeah, appointment I, only. I, I feel like that's an easy pivot for a rec facility. To yeah, do. a hundred thousand percent. And I'm right. sure there are already supplying programs and probably working also together with the medical community. Yeah. Yeah. But, but so I, I, I agree that, I mean, that's, but that's, that's the easy excuse. And right. I, I think he's easy using excuse, that, but you're losing millions of dollars. No, so I know. It's like, wait a minute. Yeah, I see. I see that. And, well, the other piece that I just thought was extremely interesting about all this too is, and it's a small population. So granted, it's just a smaller crew, but uh, the other big piece of information that not a lot of folks are thinking about is, um, is veterans. Um, if you are a, if you're a veteran and you receive, uh, um, benefits or any type of, um, uh, support from, uh, the federal Bureau of Veterans Affairs or the VA, um, they are a federally, federally recognized organization and arm. So they're not going to, they don't, you know, the federal government doesn't recognize marijuana as medicinal or legal. Right. So, so those vets who are primarily getting their they Marijuana, could go to a rec place, rec place under the radar, no big yeah. deal. Get what they need if they've, you know, they've come home with PTSD or something like yeah. that. Something calms their nerves, yeah. even if they're just their fucking knee hurts. I right. mean, anything like right. they can't go. They're not that probably. I mean, again, I think there's some legislation and some things bubbling up now that are going to prevent this. But I think there's a pretty big stigma in that community that they're not going to go get diagnosed for this because it would jeopardize their 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 benefits potentially right. or it could at least give them a hassle about how to justify that it's not worth it to them yeah. it sucks that you know <clears throat> again we what we were just talking about you the, the, everybody will hear in the episode our newest episode that's released um from last week when you're by the time you're hearing this um you know you can pick and choose how you get your treatment and mm -hmm. you can really kind of kind of diagnose yourself and and and, and kind of you have variety on what works mm -hmm. If you take that away, mm -hmm. you, like like your like uh, like your father in law, right. like we've had this conversation, it's right. just catch as catch can, like yeah. whatever. You just take whatever yeah. you can get. That's tough. Yeah, that's and that's a really interesting point. You know, I feel like um, most people don't, most people who are aren't involved in this community can really make that dis distinction because I think most people who who don't, most people who have never looked into or have stepped foot into a medical. Uh, marijuana dispensary. There, I'm getting it. There you go. Um, you're speaking they, the language. They now. probably just think you're just buying weed. You know what I mean? Like you're just going to the store and just fucking buying weed. Yeah. Like, like, like they don't really understand. They might not be that. actually thinking that you're going in there buying like a product that really fucking works for you. Or what you're saying is it's it's because they're breaking it down to the to the to like it's almost like to the genome. You know what I mean? Like they're breaking yeah. it down to the, terpenes the strains, and the strains, right? yeah, the strains and the terpenes and and the percentage of THC versus yeah. CBD. I mean, that's the fucking shit that I caught on to that's that's why this became so attractive to me because like if it was just literally you just fucking go into a store waiting in these huge lines with all these fucking potheads you know deadheads potheads you know fucking smelling them like shit or whatever like that's like the, you know the stigma if i have to go fucking waiting in line with these people and then you just go inside and all of a sudden it's just like a fucking shit show with like bongs and like bob marley posters like if that was like the setup Never would work right. I would, for me. It would never work. I would. Never so work. the Boston Globe has a marijuana section of their. Um, they, do. they do whatever. So it's called Boston Globe Mar Marijuana. If you want to follow them on Twitter, whatever. If you want to fucking pay a goddamn penny, it's probably not worth the penny that you're gonna have to pay to get into their services. But, but after like six days, I think we can see the stuff. So stuff pops yeah. up. You can read some of their things after. Older so, articles pop up. So can. there's an article with the headline that says Attorney General Moro Ma Mara Healy. Uh, and Massachusetts General Hospital are warning that smoking and vaping may increase the risk of severe illness from COVID-19. So, so I think that this is the reason. This is his primary motivation of why he's not yes. releasing the uh, accessibility to the dispensaries, the recreational dispensaries, because I think he's trying to associate the the vaping and and the uh, behavior of smoking to increased illness which is not fucking the case and he, he took and he was all over vaping uh at the end of 2019 yeah vaping was the fucking situation. thing so, so charlene i should say commissioner title we should just say commissioner title from now on because you are a commissioner your last name's title commissioner title well said these advisories would be much more credible and therefore more effective if they didn't lump all smoking and vaping of all substances into one category as if it's all the same thing. 
See, that's the fucking thing. That's that's the real fucking thing that's going on right now. Just throwing a blanket. P- putting putting the fucking blanket. And that's and I think that's where the cannabis commission the control commission comes in because I think their job tr- truly is to be an, a huge advocate for the consumers, us, as well as for the business people who are who are because they're they're basically certifying everybody. They're certifying the people to consume it. And they're also certifying the businesses to grow. Gonna, it. And that's the thing. If you trust, and that's my whole problem with this is if you set this this commission up then you trust them to regulate us and the businesses. Right. So the businesses aren't going to fuck around with bootleg vapes. Right. They're not going to let people just run around from other states and bring in COVID-19 and people that are symptomatic. And they're not going to not have social distancing laws or rules just like any other freaking legit business that wants to stay alive and stay essential. Right. And and the... The, the constant theme, because I always I, I now I'm reading into and following a lot of these different channels for cannabis commissions and, and for ag- advocacy agencies and their primary message during this COVID-19 time is prohibition doesn't work. Prohibition is doing detrimental things to the public health of our community, which is what our government and state government is arguing against. What motivation does 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 Governor Baker and his staff have? in terms of taxes like because because they're getting fucking billions of dollars from the federal government so they're not hurting for money right now and i hate to say that because i know that obviously we're going through a crisis but money is money and right now they're not thinking about the recreational cannabis dispensary community as as a viable source because i'm sure it's a fraction if you're talking like 100 150 million dollars what the fuck is that compared to like 800 billion dollars that we might be getting from the federal government you know what i'm saying so So it's just fucking chump change. So we don't have that on our side as an argument. And that's why I would love to ask Charlene these fucking questions. And I can't wait to have her on because I think this is this is the shit that I'm fucking into right now. This is the stuff that I want to know. Like, 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 because this is so new in our country, this sort of legalization um, and and business and small business and, um, you know, bringing a voice to the community when it comes to the sort of the cannabis stuff, the medicinal piece. Like, this is like uncharted territory and i don't know man i'm i'm i'm, I'm like eating this shit up man it's yeah. i wonder i wonder i wonder if this lawsuit's gonna have any legs i feel like the lawsuit is 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 gonna set this up right because because it'll be three years from now before anybody fucking knows I, but again i i don't know i mean i i don't know the i don't know the speed at which this stuff i mean obviously again we're in a fucking crisis so the, the courts aren't even fucking open <laughs> you know yeah, it's true. like you right. can't nothing's happening like, it's it's fucking fucking home so. by the way shout out to you for oh, the, yeah, for yeah, the, yeah. Pom, so, for the um, battery nice work good recommendation by you shout out to Sierra naturals to the weed doctor you recommend Sierra naturals who will eventually be a sponsor of this podcast because we love them we love you Sierra naturals uh they have amazing selection they've got a incredible inventory and the customer service is fucking superb all right so we have a special guest actually that's going to be coming on right now uh my brother oh my goodness my brother and we're my, gonna get some vid out of there now i'm the same mother uh larry i'm gonna bring you in here we go what's up yes what's up dude i this didn't realize i'm actually you. um seeing Lara. On- yeah i didn't know if i had i gotta watch it i didn't realize i had to wear a v-neck to to, to get into this uh Video chat. You, you have your uniform. This is my uniform, so I'll, you're never yeah, going to see me on this channel not yeah, this, wearing my Lara, this KMS dork hat. Have his dorky you, hat. Do you have on like a, my fucking and his, and his, KMS hat and his undershirt. On. Like, do you have an undershirt? A, is that your home uniform? What? Do you have like a way uniform? Like maybe if you're recording somewhere else, do you have like a, a black V neck when you wear? Or, All I'll say um, is I, I've uh, I've never really listened to your show, and I'm just jumping in from the West Coast. So I hope uh, that's okay. Nobody does, Larry. You're good. <laughs> All good. I figured. There's only two people that listen. Me, I think Duke logs in. My wife, awesome. my wife listens. Oh yeah, she's no way. To she a listens. couple episodes. There's no way she yeah. listens. She tells you she listens, but this is her time to not listen. Probably fair. Yeah. No, she's asked me. No, that's actually no. She's asked us some. She's asked really? some specific questions, oh, which really? makes you believe that maybe she's, she's just maybe turning, listening to like thirty less, minutes yeah. worth out of like eight we, hours. Yeah, so yeah. we produce about eight hours. It's like ten hours of content. She turns it on like thirty minutes. She turns it on for ten minutes, and there's something that happens, and she's like. He asked a question. Okay. Right. Oh, I love that part that you I'll just to give that. a little bit of backstory to my brother. He's a Hollywood producer. He makes feature films uh, all, and <laughs> also television he shows. I love how he starts. My brother is my brother. Say he's a producer. My brother's been uh, nominated for a number of Emmys and yet to win an Oscar. But maybe that'll happen at some point. And maybe, on the, the next and project. on the first podcast we had with Larry, there were children screaming in the background 
and it seems that there may be children. Oh yeah, there's. The I mean, I have three kids, and, and you are in danger of being attacked at any moment. And, and, and at this point, they've all been home for a month, so uh... <laughs> it's only worse. It's only worse since the coronavirus conversation not, we had with you the first time. Does not get better. So, uh, you still have to. It's interesting when you go into the one in in, in California. Um, my and 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 I only know this because my wife goes often. And when you go in, you have to. When you go a, into, you mean you mean specifically to the dispensaries or dispensary, to dispensaries yeah. where you go to a bar and they just like you got the bar the you know the bouncer he looks at your thing. All right, go in. Like here, they actually take it. They swipe your ID. They keep track that you've been in the store. So it is. Mm-hmm. So it is regulated to some degree. Um, mm-hmm. Like funny enough, like myself, who who is not a, a smoker or does not use cannabis, um, I recently went in with my wife because we were like on a dark date night, you know, our Saturday night date night. Of course, she wanted to stop there on the way, so I walked in with her, never went to this place, and then they carded her. I'm like, oh, cool, and I carded, they carded me, and uh, I see that they're about to swipe it. I'm like, whoa, what are you doing? And they're like, oh, we're, we're, you know, we, we swipe everybody. I'm like. I, I'm good. And they're like, well, it just, it doesn't do anything. It just keeps record of who's been here. I'm like, so, no, I'm good. So I. Nope. Not going to do I, it. Like, you know what? I'm what, not doing so, that. Um, so what's that mean? So, I mean, you're obviously, you're in the entertainment community. There's probably no, if you're not, I mean, we're, if we're talking like I don't musicians, know. Oh. they probably use the most drugs. The second class right underneath them is going to be the other creative people or the people that make fucking movies. Like, so. So you well, were just, you were feeling like you didn't want anyone knowing that you were in a dispensary because it could potentially no. do what hurt, hurt your reputation? No, like, I just the... like I just didn't want to be classified as someone who shopped in a dispensary. So Lawrence, so. what's the what's the what's the two minute recap on what's happening uh, over there? Mm. Like, okay. what's the well, just just give us like a two minute recap and then we're gonna we're gonna um, hang up. I feel like our state's ahead of the game. We're one of the first states to to shut everything down, and I think uh, our, our governor or our senators did the right thing. I think. Uh, the state uh, still doesn't have, you know, obviously we still get more cases every day as people are get, getting tested. But I feel like overall, it seems like the curve is flattened a little bit, uh, which is positive. Uh, kids are still out of school, you know, officially through May 1st. It looks like it's probably going to go through the end Did of the year. Did you see that uh, Philadelphia or Pennsylvania, they're, they're done I, for the year? No, but I, huh? I did see somewhere that that's that in Washington, D.C. are the next hotspot. Yeah. But, I, uh, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, some of ours on the East Coast are actually a little bit further out than that. May fourth, yeah, we're gonna. Yeah. It's gonna happen here. It's all I mean, gonna if, be if, here if too. Philadelphia, yeah. Pennsylvania, and then it's gonna be New York. Oh yeah, and yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's I mean, gonna I think, come up. Yeah, I mean, I think the interesting thing will be like how um, they finish the school year. That's you know, a, a you. You have the hardest job right now. If you ask me, it's all the people that have like kids that are like your kids' age. Like I'm not. I'm not in that real boat. So like you know, I'm not yeah, feeling I mean, the same no, kind of. Totally. I mean, it's like trying to Go keep ahead. them on some kind of schedule. I mean, I'm like, yeah, I'm still working. It's a lot of work. Time. I'm working, eight, you know, right. Eight, I'm working eight, eight, eight thirty in the morning to six o'clock at night, and I can hear. Right. Yeah, I, I literally. See right. The, I can hear the chaos. <laughs> yeah. you see, the, see this amazing headset. It's like, the end of the day. Yeah, that, that's a sharp, sharp looking headset you got I'll t- there. I'll now. tell you why. I'll tell you why I have it because um, I was on a number of meetings, and people <laughs> in the meetings were like, "I think you need a headset," and like this at least tunes everybody <laughs> yeah. out for the most part, and and does. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's compared to what it was before, where I just had yeah. like the buds. Like, it doesn't pick up as much stuff other than myself. Um, yeah, no, you're then, getting it done with that headset. That's a solid headset. Yeah. So, Lawrence, I'm gonna I'm gonna start implementing a segment at the end <laughs> or around the end of each episode, and it's gonna be called. And the segment's called "How High." Study high, take the test high, get high scores. Are we in the right place? Just be cool. And you might have some fun. See, I'm looking for the ecstasy, for the pot, for those shrooms. How high? Okay. So I'm going to ask. This is new to me too, Larry. So So I'm going to ask you the question, how high? And that's going to be your trigger to be like, all right, what is is the highest you've ever gotten? I I know you may have told this this story, but I wouldn't mind you repeating it if that was it. But that's gonna be that's the fucking segment. It's gonna be called "How High." What's the fucking highest you've ever got, motherfucker? I'm totally not gonna play this game. You gotta oh, fucking play this game. No, man, that's the whole point. All right, then put Jess. Then put Jessica on. Tapped. I mean, Jessica. Jessica then Jessica's gonna. Have to, Jessica can go on. You can you can pass the torch, but only once. So the next time, you better be fucking prepared. Oh, he froze. What's up? All right, you on. So we have a segment of our podcast. This is Scott, by the way. Say hi, Scott. Hi, hi Jessica. Hi. hi. Uh, we've got this segment of the podcast that we're starting, and we're going to do it on every single episode. It's going to be called How High. Do you want to get high, man? If I study high, take the test high, get high scores. Are we in the right place? Just be cool, 
and you might have some fun. See, I'm looking for the ecstasy, for the pot, for those shrooms. How high? All right. Yeah. And when I go, how high? Uh -huh. Your response is, what is the what is the highest you've ever gotten? And and just like just dress up that episode. Like, what was that about? I have lots of stories, Eric. I What's feel like best? No. just give us number one. There's you have to have a number kids. one. I got I All right. I got lost. I got lost in Key West, and I couldn't figure out like, where in the island I was. <laughs> like nice. literally, kept. How old were you? 18, 19, 19 uh, maybe. Like yeah, right? yeah. I, it was like one of those. It was Mardi Gras. So I think I. It was probably acid or like shrooms. Probably. Yeah. It was. Yeah. My, our kids are like right literally oh. right right around well, the corner but yeah i appreciate oh, I, have, I, I appreciate giving us the abbreviated <laughs> version yeah. though but yeah. i mean how about larry larry so, can't larry can't answer that question larry's afraid to larry's afraid to swipe larry to swipe his card he's afraid to fucking swipe his card no, he's not so telling any dumb. stories on this so podcast right pocket. jessica you can come on our show yeah anytime. you're absolutely coming oh. you're more, you're more yeah. i should i should i should be like jessica come on our show and larry can just like peek in at the end but uh <laughs> oh i mean i know my stuff you have no idea like larry, i know you know larry got really mad at me because the one outing that i had <laughs> i was going to the grocery store and there was like a crazy line and i was like "Ooh, but there's no line in the in the dispensary uh, <laughs> and i the bought dispensary is right near the supermarket <laughs> i bought a bong like a crazy big oh. like yeah so it's Can, but it's yeah, I've been using it. it. I mean, Go. no, it's outside, and it's it's oh. like a science project. Yeah, that's a whole show. This is a whole show. Uh, this so is a whole if show. you wouldn't do this me, if you awesome. would do me a favor, uh, when you hit it next, mm -hmm. uh, have Larry or someone just just take a video of it. You don't have to be in the video. You know, can you just be like uh. the side of your head or your hair, just so we know it's you. But just like send me yeah. the video, and I'll post it. Okay. <laughs> I'll yeah. post it in this episode. So okay. you have a week to get it to me. <laughs> All right, we love you. We're gonna we're gonna hang oh, out. I can't wait we're, to interview. We're gonna hang out, but we'll we're gonna we'll we'll talk offline and we'll make something happen. We're gonna talk all kinds of great weed talk it's gonna yeah. be awesome. and do it when the kids are around so we can all day all yeah. day <laughs> <laughs> okay all right peace Bye. later awesome do you like that segment idea that was great how high uh well that's how kind high? of it's kind of cheesy but we'll figure it Fuck, out Fuck, i know it's cheesy well you know because because <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm ripping this off a little bit from the, from the mint. You're still so growing. Guys. Well, you're still, and you're just, you're young in your weed life. So that's, you know, you're kind of like no, a 14 year old, like getting, you know, that's, you're in that, you're in that, so phase. that's, that's you're in the honeymoon phase. I, I agree with you hundred percent. That's that my, which I admire. I don't right. mean that in a disrespectful way. Right. So we'll play the hell high game with you. Yeah. Just for a little fun. while. Yeah, entertain me. Fun. I mean, listen, if we can get, if we can get more of her on and talk like that, that's yeah. going to be awesome. All right. That was great. All right, guys. Uh, that was an interesting episode. I had a great time. Uh, I hope you guys did too. Uh, peace. Stay well. Stay healthy. What is this? Is it over? We're running out of time. I don't want to hear your excuses. Oh, no, no, no. no, it's not fair. Where'd all the finals go?